Everyone, can you guys hear me? Yes, can hear you clearly. Great, excellent. All right. Did you take the exam? I haven't checked, but you did, right? Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's see. Let me nice background, Daniel. <laughs> You can do it too. It's under the settings. Just some image I found on Google. So yes, I'm using it without permission. I just got done with exam for Lowe's class 362. It's kind of rough. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I think some people will be coming in as we I'll go through this, so don't mind that. Um, so today we're going to start our new lab. Okay, so it's going to be the VPN lab, um, as I talked about. I also, before I forget, I need to talk about the term project. So that's an important um, issue. Okay, so as you know, um, We get to talk about the project. All right, so, so as you know, you know, there's no practical exam. Usually the project is the practical exam and the risk assessment. So those are the two things that you guys in, in you know would have done, right? So you would have done the as far as the project, right? You would have done the risk assessment. Uh, RCM, let's just say, and then obviously the practical. The practical is now a kind of a, so you would have, so what I'm saying is you would have done a practical exam, but you would have also done a presentation on your, on, you know, like a document about, you know, everything that you built in the network. And so, and then you would have done a little extra, but, you know, since, since this is not part, and so this is project A, project B. And so we're going to just modify this a little bit in the sense that now, you know, um, we're, you know, we're just going to assign another, another project. So what I'm going to do here is um, we have basically uh, the way that I have it planned out right now, I have two labs left. Okay. Two labs that we can do with VMs, which are, as you know, the lab you're doing today, which is the VPN lab, which is a great lab, I think. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. And then there's uh, anomaly detection lab. Detection lab. Now, an anomaly detection system is like an IDS, okay? So it's like an IDS, but it's just a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I started the VPN lab um, this week, right, on, uh, on Tuesday, and then today you're going to work on the VPN lab. Next Tuesday, I will do a lecture on anomaly detection, and I'll explain how that works. Okay, and so, and then the following Thursday, we will continue with the VPN lab. So, for the project, you have, you'll have two options, okay, so you'll have two options. Uh, at the end of the semester, on one day, you'll do, you know, your RCM presentations, let's say, and then on, you know, the week before finals, you will do your RCM presentations. Um, and then, guys, if you, 
um, connect to this thing, make sure to put your name on it because uh, there's something called Zoom attack or something where people are, you know, they, they get your ID and then they take over, hijack the session. So make sure you put your names on it so I can see who it is and then let them in, okay? Uh, just, it, you know, it's, we're, we're in difficult times and still people manage to create some, some cyber thing, right? So just, just shows you how it is. But um, anyway, so please, uh, so, so do that, you know, that's just, just in case. Um, so anyway, so as far as the project, we have these two labs left. left. And basically what I'm gonna ask you to do is pick, your, you have to do these two labs. They're simple labs in a way, but then you could take either one of these two topics and extend it into a project, okay? So, and what I mean by this, for instance, the software lab, we're only going to do it with VMs. However, you could decide, you know what, I, want, I really like this software VPN lab and VMs, but how about now, you know, I'm working in teams of three. So there's three houses, my friends, my house, my friend's house, right? What if we decide that for the project, we're gonna use that and build a VPN across the actual internet between our three houses. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, at least, all right. So that would be the extension of the VPN to, into a project. You see that? So obviously this is not required for the lab. We're only gonna use VMs, but if you, if you would like to do this, you can extend it and that would be your project that you would present at the end of the semester, okay? The other option, if you don't want to do that and you just want to do the, the lab and VMs, then the other option is an anomaly detection project. Okay, so obviously I haven't covered this topic. I'm going to cover it on, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cover it on Tuesday. I'm going to cover it on Tuesday. Um, and then, you know, after that lecture, hopefully it'll become clear and you can do that. So, so basically with an anomaly detection system, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have PCAP files, so PCAP data. So, nor, you know, you're gonna have normal traffic that you have to generate normal traffic and then you would have to generate attack traffic. You know how to do that with NetWalks, right? And then you would have to build a model, and I'll show you guys how that can be done. Build a model, and then you would test the model, basically, right? So you would do some kind of a project where you show, okay, this is the data. I'm going to have normal data, attack data. We're gonna use the anomaly detection technique, which is like an IDS anomaly, right? So this would be a Python code coding problem, basically. And then you would test it to see if you can detect anomalies. Do you guys understand? Guys? Yeah. Are there any questions? Uh, they're going to post a video on that, right? Oh, go ahead. Who, who is it? Sorry, it's me. Uh, Susanna, do we, are you going to post a video about this topic? Of uh, which one? Anomaly detection? Yes. Yeah, we're going to do, so I just said that we're going to do this next Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I will do a lecture just on this alone. Because, you know, I kind of have to show you and then, and then you guys can pick a topic. Okay. Yeah, so it, both of these are labs. Okay, so both of these are labs that we have to do. So the project would be choosing one of these two labs and extending it into a project. And. Uh... These are still group projects, right? Or yes, you can still do that. I, I, you can still do things in, in, in groups of three remotely somehow. That's that's perfectly fine. All right, thank you. Oh, so this is what um, I want to make sure that we have a project. As I said, given that this has, um, you know, we're reducing that a little bit. Um, so, and you're still working on the RCM, right? So that everyone's working on that. I've only received one email from one group guys so i need to get the emails from the other groups of what of what you're doing as far as the risk assessment so in, hey, sorry. 
Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So for the next two laps, we're still working on our with our groups. Yes, you can work on. Please submit individual reports. Okay. You don't have to meet because of social distancing, but if you okay. can remotely um, work together somehow, help each other out. That's fine within your group. Does that make sense? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so in summary, we have two labs left. Two labs, right, which are the one that you're going to work on today, VPN software, and you have the anomaly detection. So I, that's, uh, as I said, that's a different kind of a lab because it's a more of a research type of a thing. So but I'll, I, I'll cover that topic, which is like an, oh, sorry, not VPN, IDS. Anomaly detection. Right, so those are the two labs. As far as projects, as far as projects, you already have project A, which is the risk is the risk and control matrix. You should be working on that. And then now you need to pick one of these two topics, right, and extend it. So, like I said, the, the perfect example of this is that we are doing VPN just in VMs, but how, how about you try to implement this at home? Right? You, you try to implement this with your routers. Um, and so on. Does that make sense? Or you do the IDS, which I'll explain on Tuesday. Got it? Are there any, are there, are there, are there any questions about this? I'm so sorry for the RCM. Is that also a group project? <laughs> uh, yes, everything, okay, everything, it, the RCM is a group project. It would have been a group project actually. Uh, the, the software lab um, would have been a group projects on the network environment, the Cisco network environment. The anomaly detection would have been a project, group project on the Cisco equipment. So the only issue now is, because we don't have it, um, you know, and then really your practical exam, which is your, would have been your project as well, would have been everything altogether, right? But got to modify it a little bit. So that's why I'm saying VPN or anomaly detection just extended. We have to talk about how you would extend anomaly detection. Now, what I'm suggesting of extending the VPN um, to your houses is just an idea. You might have a better idea, okay? Okay. So do these, do, do, does this make sense? Yes. All right, great. All right, so there are no more questions then. So, I, I really wanted to just talk about that. So this is basically, if you look at this, you have left then the VP, you just have to finish VPN software lab, which we'll be working on today. You'll get a IDS lab as well. Um, and I'm not gonna set deadlines at this point. Basically everything is gonna be due at the end of the semester. So that, you know, you got a little bit more flexibility. I'm um, doing that in, in, in several of the classes. Uh, so you basically have your VPN software left, IDS anomaly left. That I'll give you pretty much all the requirements. Risk and control matrix left, and then this project, pick one, one of the two. And then obviously we would have a, a final written exam. And that's going to be during finals week. So that would be similar, I guess, to the online midterm we had. Okay. All right. So I'm getting, I don't hear any questions. So I'm assuming this is clear for everyone. So let's go ahead and go back to Let's go. Let's let's now get to the topic. So today's topic is so I, I so I started the virtual. So can you guys see this? 
What are you guys? What are you guys seeing right now? Uh, you. Me. Right okay. now. Okay. We're just. Okay. So now uh, I need to share the screen. Yes. All right. Can you guys see the, the Seed Labs document? I can. Okay, great. So this is the document that you will be using. Uh, it should be pretty clear. Uh, so if you want, you can go to So you can go to Blackboard, so Blackboard, and you navigate to 454. You will see under Learning Materials, go to Labs, and then, so we've done all these labs. Here's the RCM, and today we're working on this one, Software VPN, and then the NSL KDD, that's gonna be the, the anomaly detection. So, if you click on software VPN, you have basically here all the information. So this involves cryptography, like an SSL. So if you don't remember like uh, some of the ideas of cryptography from 350, you can read through these slides. They're the 350 slides. Um, this is the PDF that, uh, that, um, that I showed you just a second ago. So you'll download this, okay? So you guys can work on this. And then here, these are two zip files, okay? So it's basically, uh, those C files contain uh, C code, all right? So it's C code. You can see one is, says just VPN, the other one says TLS code. So basically, the way the lab works is first, you're just gonna try to build the tunnel, all right? Between, you know, the machines. As I described, if you remember, on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I kind of described the, the environment, right? Um, so you're going to basically use this code first. If you go inside this code, and I'll do that in a second, uh, you will see that it contains a script for client and a script for server, right? So those, obviously, you have two VMs. One is a client server, one is a VPN server. You'll be using 16, 16, seed 16.04. And then, so you have to run both scripts, you know, one on the client, one on the server, okay? Uh, and then once you complete that, you know, that, that, that I think is like task one, task two, task three of the, of the lab, then you'll be ready for task four. And in task four, you'll be doing the TLS code, okay? So you, you'll, you'll be doing uh, the TLS code uh, part, and the TLS code is the encryption part. So basically, you build the tunnel and everything, do all the routing, but the data is still being sent unencrypted, right? And then you move to this section here, TLS code, and then now you're going to implement the encryption part. Remember that in an encryption, you want to achieve confidentiality, integrity, and authentication, right? And so those are the principles of this. But all of this is described really well in this, um, in this document, and of course, next Thursday, once I finish the anomaly detection lecture, I will, um, you know, explain a few more things. So today, what I want you to do is I want everyone to be well situated with this lab, all right? So my goal is that today you will sit down, you know, with your teammates and start, um, you know, planning this and how, you know, how you're going to do it, okay? Remember the code is already there. You may have to tweak it a little, but you don't have to really like write it from scratch. Okay. Um, are there any questions about this on Blackboard? Not at the moment. Okay, great. So I'm gonna close this out. All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to the PDF. So can you guys see the PDF? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. So uh, 
the document is pretty clear. I think I, I've, you know, I've taken, um, it looks pretty, pretty, very, very detailed. Um, and it's pretty much some of this is what I said on, um, on Tuesday. Okay. So this is your virtual private network VPN. So the good thing about this is that, you know, you're building, so think of it this way, as I said before, you have basically just two Linux boxes and you're going to try from scratch, from scratch, you're going to try to um, build a VPN. Okay, so you're going to try to build a VPN from just that. Okay, so you, we can take a look at the, the instructions. So I'll go over the overview again. Uh, these are basically the things that you want to accomplish in this lab. You know, you build a virtual private network, use the ToonTap and IP tunneling, and this is just to establish, you know, to basically establish the communication medium. Then you have the routing. So remember, we talked a little bit about the routing on Tuesday. And then after that, you can see like the second half is the code for PKI, which is public key cryptography, and then uh, TLS, SSL. You remember secure socket layers. Uh, we covered that in 350. I'll cover a little bit of TLS at the very end of this semester. Um, and then, you know, there's some information on authentication. So if you remember, um, RSA was really good for, for all of those things. And it, so it's basically some of what we did in 350. Okay. And in, 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 in essence, you know, in, in relation to the keys, you know, private key, public key and all of that. So now you're just going to kind of implement. All right. So as you can see, you know, um, I'll go over these steps. Okay. And, but I just want to show you the lab. And give you a, an overview so you can see the very first thing is just to establish the ton tap if you can anyone tell me what the ton tap was you guys remember what i said this was anyone anyone <laughs> tune tap no isn't that the mirroring of the network device yeah, it's a virtual, it's a virtual uh, card, right? A virtual interface. Right. So you'll be using that. Um, so you, you have to establish that. Then we have the, you're going to run the VPN server client, make the connection, right? Then you're going to do the setting up of, of routing on client and server. Uh, and then basically you're going to test a VPN tunnel with pinging and telnet and you can test it with, you know, other services as well, like HTTP and FTP, for instance. Okay. And then as you can see, that's basically it as far as the first phase. Okay. So my goal for the, for the, for this lab is that we should get, we should complete this one um, first, right? So task two just creating the tunnel. After that's completed, then we're gonna move into the part about encrypting that tunnel, which is task number three, okay? And then, uh, you know, task four, like authentication, we'll see if we have time, uh, we need a certificate authority for that. So as time permits, um, all right, and, and so on. Supporting multiple clients, all of those, we may skip those in this lab, but for those of you that decide to do this as a project, then you could take on these additional tasks. Plus, basically what I would like to see is, I would like to see this VPN, you know, as a project implemented kind of in your home. Like if you can use this to communicate with your friend across the internet, for instance, or something like that, some, some extension of it. Is that clear, guys? Yeah. Okay, great. So now I think, so that was the brief, you know, the overview. This is a lot of, there's a lot of detail here, so I'm gonna go through it. 
uh, you know, basically line by line. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll do this for a while and then I'll give you the rest of the time to just kind of get started with it and ask any questions that you might have about anything. So, you know, basically like a lab, right? So I'll, you know, give the introduction of the lab kind of guide you a little bit of, of what I want. And then after that, you know, let you guys work on it, ask questions and so on. So the first thing obviously that you should do is you should download all of those files, right? So you should download the PDF, you should download the TLS zip file and download the VPN software file, right? So you wanna download all of those. Uh, the, I, I wanted to say one more thing before I forget. Um, I forget. All right, so maybe it'll come back to me. So let's, so let's get started here then. So overview. So a virtual private network VPN is used for creating, is used for creating, um, I'm trying to write on this and it's not loading. I guess I, I hadn't tried uh, writing on PDFs. I don't quite know how to do that. Okay, anyway, so I'll just, you, you guys can see my cursor, right? Like if I do that, you can see that, guys? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. So I'll, that'll have to do. All right, so a virtual private network is used for creating a private scope of computer communications or providing a secure extension of a private network into an insecure network such as the internet, right? So that's pretty obvious. So a VPN is a widely used security technology and VPNs can be built upon an IPsec, IPsec or TLS SSL, right? So that's pretty important to, to note. So VPNs can be built upon IPsec or TLS. With TLS is the transport layer security, secure socket layer. These are two fundamentally different approaches for building VPNs. And in this lab, we focus on the TLS SSL based VPNs. Okay, so that's an important distinction. Uh, this type of VPN is often referred to as TLS SSL VPNs, All right, So that's the one we're going to do. So the IPsec, this one, we're not gonna be able to do because it won't give us the flexibility that we get with the other one. So um, in particular, we wanna keep the packets whole so that we can just send them, route them through the, the device. So the learning objective, the learning objective of this lab is for students to master the network uh, and security technologies underlying VPN. So, you know, you guys know a lot about networking. You know, we've been doing a lot of examples of, you know, using the TAP and, you know, tax and everything in the network. Uh, you use Telnet and you stole the password of Telnet. So you obviously saw that, you know, Telnet was insecure. You know that uh, SSH is secure. So in this lab, you know, uh, you're going to build tunnels basically, but then also in the soft, at the software level, you're gonna explore at least a little bit of how you encrypt the packets, right? You know, some of the challenges with that. Um, so that, that's basically the learning objective. So the learning objective of this lab is for students to master the network and security technologies underlying VPNs. To achieve this goal, students will be asked to implement a simple TLS SSL VPN. Now, although this, this will be simple, it's amazing how, you know, uh, it does include all the essential elements of a VPN, okay? And so really, you know, one of the objectives is, remember, you're writing this in C, and C is a very powerful, and it's, you know, the, the basic language that you would use to achieve um, high, high throughput, right? So you want to have a very efficient algorithm. So keep in, so that's, you know, that's a good thing. So it should show you how you can, implement this yourselves. Uh, obviously there's challenges, but you know, one of the great things about doing this lab is you learn that VPNs are nothing more than software. They're basically the encryption algorithms that you learn in 350 plus just understanding how to 
set up routing rules and all of that. Um, Cause that's really what it is. A tunnel is just a whole bunch of rules for routing packets. All right. So um, it, it, although it's simple, it does include all the essential elements of a VPN. Now, now remember this class is called Assure Systems Design and Implementation, right? So if we look at that, you know, that's kind of what we've been looking at the whole semester is everything, networks or systems, and you've been looking at, you know, designing and building, right? So implementing. So here uh, we're looking at VPN and how, to, how the design works, because you, you know, you already know a lot about cryptography from 350, and so how the design works and, and the routing and everything, and then now the implementation part. So the design and implementation of TLS, SSL, VPNs exemplify a number of security principles that you already are quite um, knowledgeable of. All right, so they include, we scroll down here, obviously the VPN, a virtual private network over the internet. Uh, the TunTap, which might be a little bit new to you, but you know, that's uh, Linux, right? So, you know, we'll understand that. Uh, creating tunnels, right? Then of course, you know, now this is a, a, a great place to practice routing. So we'll, because we'll, you know, we'll have to create all these routing rules, okay? And then after that, there's this, uh, the section over here, which are basically, you know, PKI, which as you know, it allows you to achieve authentication and um, confidentiality and integrity, right? And then uh, additionally, we will look at the programming of it. And we will even, as time permits at the very end, cover a little bit of TLS, but, if, but you already know SSL, right? So you guys already know what Secure Sockets layer is SSL because we covered that in 350, all right? And, um, and so on. So as far as the reading materials, you can follow along with the book. So, you know, uh, remember there's two books, actually there's the Computer Security by Wang Liang Du, and then there's the Computer, secure, computer and, and Internet Security, all right? So it's both of those books. So the chapters are in both. It's just that I think these chapters, um, 16 and 19, are for the se Computer Security book. If you look at this in the Computer and Internet Security, I think it'll be like chapters 19 and 24, something like that. Basically. I wish I could write on here. I don't know that I can, but look for the chapters VPN and then look for the chapter TLS. But start with the VPN uh, chapter first. You know, that, that's what I would recommend. And then everything else you know, so you're, we already covered PKI and 350, okay? All right, great. Oh, I should say, before I forget, uh, check the website, the Seed Labs website. So if you go to the Seed Labs website, go to 1604, find the VP network security, then under network security, you'll find the, the VPN lab. And then under there, um, there's more. So I basically the code I gave you is from, from those links there, but there's some additional documents there. So if you want more information about routing in Linux and more information about uh, tune tap and things like that. There's a few very useful links there. I don't think you'll need them, but it, you can always uh, read more on that. Okay. Any questions so far? No questions. Nope. Pretty good. All right. Great. Um, I am. I I, I want to check if I'm recording this. Give me a sec, I just wanna, yeah, I am recording. Okay. So I will post this video. Um, later tonight. All right, so now let's move on to the next area. All right, so lab environment. So like I said, for this lab, you are only required to implement this on VNs, VMs. Um, if you if you decide to do this as your project, you know you'll do the complete lab and try to build a network maybe between your friend and your friend's house, um, or something else. I'm open to ideas, right? So I'm I'm definitely open. You know, you guys are pretty creative, so sometimes you'll have 
a good idea. All right, so let's see. Now, the one thing you can't do is like, oh, you ju just use a tool like OpenVPN or something. It, it would have to be based on this. All right, so the lab environment, this lab has been tested on the pre-built Ubuntu 16.04, right? So it's, it's on the 16.04 C. Um, and you will need to use the OpenSSL package in that. Uh, so the, the, the package includes the header files, libraries, and commands. And so if you remember, when, you, when we took 350, um, we only use OpenSSL in the command line. So we only use like the program command line. But this time, remember, you're using the C programming language. And so therefore, um, you will need to use the libraries, right? Because your C code is gonna look for those libraries. So that's why, and I'll, I'll, I'll stress this, you definitely wanna use C because if you just use your own 1604, you may not have those libraries installed already. And so nothing will work and you'll be like, okay, what, you know, what's going on? All right, so very important. All right, so let's take a look at the lab tasks, All right? So you can see here lab tasks, okay? So in this lab, students need to implement a simple VPN for Linux, okay? Remember that Linux, any Linux machine that has two interfaces is basically a router. I don't know if any of you were in the 350 class last semester, but if you, if you notice, we now use uh, Raspberry Pis. And on the Raspberry Pis, we have uh, Linux Raspberry OS or something like that. And basically, we just have two network cards there, and we use those devices as routers, right? And so, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why we did that change uh, with Professor Kim is we wanted to, you know, kind of show you that at the end of the day, any, any Cisco device or, or any company's routers and switches, that firmware is basically a Linux kernel, really. And you just have two network interfaces, and then you do all the routing. So anyway, so here we're kind of doing the same. Um, one of the devices that you will have, one of your uh, VMs, will have to become a sort of a router because it, it will do forwarding, right? So it'll have to learn how to do forwarding. Uh, and so we need to set that up. So you know, we're basically converting it. And you can see it here, actually. This one, uh, if, you, if you see my mouse where it's hovering over here, that one will need to have forwarding on it. And that, you know, that basically makes it into a simple little router. All right, uh, so th this is, you know, call it mini, mini, mini VP, VPN or however you want to call it. Okay, this is the, the tool that we need to implement. So let's look at task number one, all right? So task number one, the first step, task number one, we will create a VPN tunnel. Okay, so we need to create a VPN tunnel. Let me bring up. I think you can see it there. So we will create a, can you guys see what I'm showing, my PDF? Yeah, we can see it. All right, great. Thank you. All right, so uh, we will create a VPN tunnel between a computer client, so this one over here, right? So this one over here, okay? And the gateway, this one. So basically what that means is on this machine, uh, on 10.0.7, you will need to run the code for VPN clients. So remember I said there's two folders in there in the, in, the, in the Blackboard, and one is TLS, one is VPN. For, the, for this task, you don't need the TLS yet. You only use the VPN one. Inside, you will find two scripts. One is called uh, VPN clients, and then one is called VPN server. So obviously, you would use the VPN client here, VPN soft, a VPN server on here, okay? So we will create a VPN tunnel between a computer client and a gateway, allowing the computer to securely access a private network via the gateway, right? So that means, you know, this computer. Notice that we have a network, the 192.168.60 network over here, and then over here we have the 10.02 network, right? So Remember that to do this configuration, you will have to use your VMware workstations editor, 
right? So you go to the menu, go to editor, and you know where it shows like gateway, NAT, and host? So you're gonna have to play around with that to set up these networks, okay? Uh, we need at least three VMs for this scenario. So I know you guys are in different uh, houses and you can't meet together. What I would suggest you do is each of you basically have the three VMs so that you all get the same out of this. Each of you um, have the three VMs running on your machine and you just help each other out, but all three can, can basically test, test the network at your home, right? So that would be the, probably the best way. And then one person makes you know, some progress and then you can help the other person in your group and you know, help each other out, that's okay. I mean, that's what you would have done in the physical network anyway. Uh, it would have been a little bit easier because you wouldn't have had to configure, you know, in the VMware editor and things like that, but that's fine. All right, so now, um, so you need at least three VNs, VPN client, uh, which will also be, can be referred to as host you. And that's just so that you don't have to also modify um, on this side, right? You can just use the same computer. And then, but we definitely need to have this on this end, on this end, we will definitely need to do the modification in VMware. So um, VPN client, VPN server, which is gonna be the gateway acting as a router, and then a host <coughs> in the private network, which is this one, host V. Okay, okay so, so that, that one there. And you can see, so you can see basically the network over here. Um, you know, that's the NAT network, and this is basically uh, the internal network or the host network that you're gonna be using. Are there any questions so far, guys? Nope. No questions, wow. You guys are understanding this really well. Uh, Okay, so now then let's move on. In practice, the VPN client and the VPN server server would be connected via the internet, as you know, All right? For those of you that will do this as the project, basically you would implement that that much. For the sake of simplicity for this lab, we directly connect these two machines to the same LAN in this lab. Uh, this LAN simulates the internet basically. And here you have the information about VMware, so you can see we will use the NAT network adapter for this LAN, okay, for that LAN. The third machine, HOSV, <coughs> excuse me, is a computer inside, is a computer inside the private network. So this would have been equivalent to this computer being in switch one. So if you remember in your physical network, right, you had switch one, switch two, switch three, so we would have wanted, you know, um, so really, oh, I should, I should specify how, yeah. So this machine, HOSV, would have been switch one. This is, would have been switch one. This is the, okay, so this is switch. Let me ask you this question. If this, is, if this would have been switch one, right, and client PC 1001.5, uh, in your physical network, what device would have been this one? I'm what sorry, could you repeat that, please? Huh? Could you repeat that question? Yeah, so the question is, let's, you know, maybe this will help. So you guys spent a lot of time imagining that physical network, right? And hopefully you still have that diagram in your head. So here we're doing everything in the VMs, but sometimes I always think that with the VMs, it's not so obvious what you're doing because, you know, I. It's not physical, right? So you kind of get confused. So if, if you were to do this, let's say on the physical network, right? Implement this. What computers or places in that physical network would have mapped to the, the computers or places in this virtual network? So for instance, I gave you the example. This computer here would have been connected to switch one. Do you see what I'm saying, Susanna? Yes, I do. Okay, so then my question is, 
what computer on the physical network would this gateway be? Which, which computer in your physical network do you think would have performed the role that this VPN server is currently performing? Notice it is a router, right? You know, it's got two, two networks. It's gonna do VPN services. So where do you think this would have been? What device in our physical, or in, in anyone else can answer this? You could put it on PC2, or you could put it on the, the router itself. Or well, 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 remember, this is the internal network. This is switch one. This is 1001.5 client PC. So given that, do you, do you still think this would have been the router? You'd, you'd want like to protect right the there. internal network, right? So, well, wait, if, if you're, if you're saying that host V is basically the client PC that's connected to switch one. The only thing that was connected to switch one after client PC was the um, firewall. The ASA, right? The ASA. Yes, exactly. Does this make more sense now? So I, I wish I could write here, but what I'm saying is exactly if this was the physical network, this server here would have been the ASA. Okay, because that's the only one that's keeping you from like giving any kind of security in a way. Well, the ASA, the, the, one of the primary functions of the ASA was to connect two networks, right? It connected the mm -hmm. 010 network to the 192.168.1.0 network, remember? Mm -hmm. Right? And so it was the ASA. So really it did that. And now I'm saying that this device is a VPN server, but guess what? The ASA also was going to be your VPN server. Oh, okay. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, where could you put VPN client, this machine, 10027? Where could it go? Now, this would be outside the firewall, right? Well, you tell me. You could put it at switch two. Okay. Or switch three, right? Does it matter if it's at switch two or switch three? No. No. I don't think it does so. not matter. As long as this machine, let's say we put it on switch three, as long as it can ping 10028, you're good. It doesn't matter where you put it. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Definitely. All right, yeah. great. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm what I'm doing now is I'm kind of trying to so if we were physically connecting this to our network, you know, that, you know, it would basically, this is switch one, this is client PC, this is the ASA, and then this could be switch two or switch three, it doesn't matter. And that, that's the remote worker. All right, so then we would have had a VPN client software here and the ASA would have provided the, the VPN server services, okay? So we are doing exactly the same, literally exactly the same except we're doing it in, uh, in code, basically, okay? So that, that's all it is. So that lab would have been in, in the physical network, it would be a little bit easier because we wouldn't have so much routing, but at the same time, I think doing all those routing rules will be very, very insightful. Okay, I'm sorry, quick question. So then- Yeah, Susanna, please. The host, uh, you would have been on a, on a different network, right? If we would have done it it could be so, so, so notice here, right? So the internal network is 1.268.60. That's mm -hmm. switch one. Mm -hmm. Both of these, this cable's on switch one, this cable's on switch one. Here, you don't, you know, imagine it's switch two, basically, technically, mm -hmm. right? So 1002 is the interf outside interface of the ASA. And then this is just, you know what this is? DMZ. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. now, connect another router and then another switch and then move the computer even further out to switch three but that would just make this lab in, in vms very complicated okay so so yes you as dmc okay make sense yes all right so you're coming from v that's why vpn 
client is usually, you know, client is the software that you install on your laptop and then you go home and then you VPN into the university. You see that? So VPN client is really um, a software thing. You know, the way that we do it is just install a little VPN client. In our case, we have C code. But uh, you are going to go, so if, if we look at tr uh, domains of trust, this, this is not so trusted because this is the internet. If you're coming from the outside through the ASA, which in this case is the VPN server, into the internal network, you can see that written over here, and the internal network is literally the trusted network, okay? Is that clear? Yes. Is that clear for you? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, please stop me at any time if something is confusing. Uh, I like, you know, I think that, you know, now it's probably clear for you guys because I, I, I tried, I mapped this to our physical network. Well, let's go ahead and continue here. So we were saying that for the, for the internet, we will use that NAT network, right? So we will use the NAT network adapter for, the, for this LAN. The third machine, host V, is a computer inside the private network, right? So, you know, that would be uh, switch one in our physical network. So users on host U, outside of the private network, want to communicate with host V via the VPN tunnel. So imagine that you have a, an FTP server, right, in, in, in the inside network, and you want to access it from the outside. Well, you want to be able to route the packets to that. Sure, we can do that. But you also need to authenticate and encrypt. And so we, we need to achieve that as well. Um, to simulate this setup, we connect host V to VPN server, right? So we will do that, which is serving as a gateway via the internal network. Uh, in, in such a setup, host V is not directly accessible from the internet, right? Nor is it directly accessible from host U, which basically means that we have achieved our objective. We basically put that machine behind the gateway. It's like we put it behind the ASA. And so it's not readily accessible just like that. There's gotta be some routing done. Uh, so this is important. So now you're, you guys are using VMware, not VirtualBox, I think. Um, now here it says that no DHCP will be enabled, but that's not a problem because you guys are, are used to configure all of your VMs statically. Anyway. So just keep doing that. Okay, so, you know, mimic any network that you want, but, you know, continue to set up everything statically. And you know how to do that in Linux. So I, you know, Basically, this paragraph just shows you how to do that. You guys know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna skip this part so you know, click on network icons. Is there a chat? What is this question? Yes, so I have a question and we are using three VMs with two separate networks managed by VM. Yes, one of the machines, only one, uh, the one that's the gateway, will ha you'll have to configure um, in that editor, okay? So that you can use, instead of NAT, you can use the other connection host. One of the systems will be? One of, yes, one of the systems will be on both networks, exactly. So if you go here, this machine, will be connected on the VMware to the NAT network with this number, and then to a host network, for instance, with this IP address. And then these two machines will be connected that way, okay? So this is similar to what happened with a lot of you that where you had problems this semester, where you would, you know, the physical machine and the VM were not connected. And it was because in that editor, you were missing, I think, that NAT, for whatever reason, so it's, it's kind of the same thing here. That's how you will be able to connect one machine to two separate networks. Mm 
Okay, so no more questions on the chat. All right, so, um, so basically, as I said, you continue to configure everything uh, statically. Right, so you know about configuring edit connections, wired connections. Okay, so that's all done. Skip that. All right, so this is just, again, you know, follow these instructions, make sure you read it, but you already know how to set things statically. Manually set up the IP, all of that. All right, so that was pretty much like the, the overview the next thing that we want to talk about is the creating a VPN tunnel using the ton tap. So remember the ton tap, as I said, is a virtual editor, right? So the enabling technology for the SSL, TLS SSL VPN is ton tap. And ton tap is a thing of Linux or Unix operating system. So all, all operating Unix. All, op, all Unix operating systems should have this, which is now widely implemented in modern operating systems. Uh, I explained this on, month, on Tuesday. Tun, tune tap are virtual network kernel drivers, right? So they're tied to the Linux kernel, right? And basically, I like to think of them as virtual interfaces. They, they implement network device, uh, network devices that are supported entirely in software. And remember that what I said is that, you know, we are going from network to tune tap to a program, right? So you're gonna write, the C program is the program and it's basically the tune tap allows you to forward a packet as if it was going from network card to tune tap to network, card, right? But we're doing, uh, network card to tune tap to program. Okay. So I already talked about tap and basically I'm not going to repeat that. It just is something that we're not going to use. Tune is a network tunnel, right? Simulates a network layer device uh, and it operates with layer three packets such as IP packets. So that conveniently that's what we need. All right. So with tune tap, we can create virtual network interfaces. Okay. So the user space program is usually attached to a ToonTap virtual network interface. We'll have to create that connection. And then packets sent by an operating system via ToonTap network interface are delivered to the user space program. And that's what I described on Tuesday as well. On the other hand, packets sent by the program via ToonTap network are injected into the operating system network stack so basically they are going from program to tune tap to, to network card. And obviously when they hit the network card, they go out into the switch and you know, they, can re they can reach their destination, okay? To the operating system, it appears that the packets come from an external source uh, through the virtual network interface. So it basically means that it, it believes it came from another computer. It doesn't know that it came from a program. It doesn't really matter to the, to the network. All right, so when a program is attached to ToonTap interface, which is what you guys will be doing, that's the C program. And you will, so remember, you will do this in Linux. So Linux will create that ToonTap, right? And that's kind of what I described on um, Tuesday. And then you'll see program will have to attach to that. So I think the tune, the tune, uh, the virtual interface will be called tune zero. So in the C code, you'll see as you look through the code that um, that's the name that you need to attach to. So when a program is attached to a tune tap interface, the IP packets that the computer sends uh, to this interface will be piped into the program. So it's just a basic uh, piping process. And then on the other hand, the IP packets that the program sends to the interface will be piped into the computer itself and back to the network. And this will be done, obviously that's done in the C code, right? And that's provided. So it's gonna be a read and a write uh, system calls that you will see in there. And that's for receiving and sending the packets uh, respectively. 
Any questions so far, guys? Not right now. All right, so you will be creating, um, you know, as I said, so you have the two scripts, VPN client and VPN server. You can download those from the website. I already provided them on Blackboard. If you want, you can just go to the website and, and get them again. Um, they're in basically the same thing. Um, and as I said, you can check out the book. The book, you know, chapter 19 or 16, depending on which book you have, has, it goes into all the detail of the code, right? So it goes all the detail of the code. I will describe some of it uh, next, uh, next Tuesday. And of course, these, these, those two programs uh, are what creates the tunnel. Remember that a tunnel is just really packets that are encapsulated with certain headers, and those headers can only be interpreted by VPN client or VPN server. So they, they have basically, you know, uh, you need that, right? So you need that to, to create the tunnel. So basically, VPN client and VPN server are the two ends of the VPN itself. All right, so they will, they come, so when you build these tunnels, they communicate with each other using either TCP or UDP, right? Um, and so in our sample code for this lab, we will be using UDP for the sake of simplicity. So obviously, so basically that, you know, that's the protocol that we're going to be using. Okay. So now does that mean that you can't try Telnet? No, that, it doesn't mean that you can still uh, use Telnet through the tunnel. It just means that the Telnet packets that come in, which are TCP will then be, uh, encapsulated within UDP packets. So that's all it means. They will be delivered on the other end and they will come back out again as Telnet or TCP packets. Right? So I hope that also makes sense. All right, so now there's a, this just describes a little diagram that's down here. So we can see the process here. Uh, this is the, v, the relationship between the VPN client and the VPN server. So remember, um, this, you know, this is the VPN client computer. This is the VPN server. This is the actual interface, right? So remember that the computer has an actual interface, right? Actual interface there. But then you set up the tune zero, right? And you set up the tune zero over here, right? And if you notice these tune zeros, I hope that, I don't know that, you know, if you look, look close, look close to this part. So here, this part here, this part here, that's the internet, right? And then the communication that you establish there is the VPN tunnel uh, using, uh, as I said, at UDP, okay? So, the computer that you have, 1604 and 1604 over here, they have an interface, right? Which is 10027 and 10028. So those are still there, right? But then you create tune zero over here and tune zero over here. That's the ton tap that Linux creates. And now the VPN network, for instance, notice it would be 192.168.53. And then over here, it is 192.168.53. So they are both now in the same, through that ton uh, virtual interfaces, they are now connected, right? That's, that's the tunnel basically. Uh, so you can see that you create the ton zero here, right, on the Linux machine. Then that ton zero, you get a packet on the actual interface over here, and then ton zero, forwards it to the VPN client program. That's the C code. The C code then would, you know, transform the packet, do the encryption, all of that, and then it sends it back. So it sends it back to tune zero, and then tune zero sends it back to 1002. 
But now the packet is in the VPN encapsulation. So it's gonna come in through all of this, right? And go over here and then it comes back to the network over here, 10028. VPN server, right? And that it gets to Tune Zero, which is the virtual interface over here. It's sent to the VPN server program, which is the C program. And then the CPM, uh, you know, the, the, the server program will do its encryption and so on. Okay, so um, is this clear? Are there any questions about this? The relationship, so um, of how Tune Zero is the connection, is the bridge between the C program itself running on that machine and let's say the network card or the, you know, the OS and then the OS is connected to the network. No, I think I'm good. Okay, great. Well, okay, great. Well, that's clear. That's, that's good. That's very good. All right. So, um, so what time is it? So it's seven o five, right? So at this point, the rest of this. So that was really the the big picture kind of uh, <coughs> of the of the topic. So that's the kind of big picture of the lab. Everything else going forward is basically the steps. So at this point, you guys can read through this and start doing your configuration, okay, your configuration. So what I would recommend is that by next Thursday, you should try to complete step one, you know, try to, so your goal should be to complete step one, step two, so you wanna run VPN server and client, follow these instructions. Remember, you have to do all the setting up of the IP, some of the routing, make sure, you know, for, enable forwarding, all of that. All right, I also want you, you know, set up the routing over here, set up the routing on host V and test the VPN tunnel. So basically until here, okay guys? You don't have to worry about the encrypting the tunnel part yet, task three. So we can wait for that and we'll discuss that next week. But so your assignment for this um, from today, Thursday, until next Thursday is to complete until here. So basically you can test the VPN tunnel by you know, running ping or telnet and just, you, know, you can see what happens. You can also have Wireshark running in the background and you can take a look at your traffic. Remember at this point, uh, because you, know, you, will be, you, will, you will stop here, so your tunnel is still not encrypted. Is this clear, guys? Clear? All right, I assume it is. You're shy, probably tired from the week. Um, so now let's move on to, I wanna show you, I have some files here. Yes, you would not want to use uh, up until before task 2.3. Obviously, you can't use this over the real internet because it's all not encrypted. All right, so let's go. All right, so now I want to uh, share something else. What are you guys seeing right now? Do you see the the background of my computer? Is that what you're seeing? Yes. Hey, just yes. a background. Cool. Okay, fire. great. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you notice in here, I have these three files, right? So that's just a seat, uh, uh, the PDF. These two folders are what I was talking about. So for this, for the, what you have to do, what I just described, you don't have to use the TLS yet, right? So the TLS has all the encryption things. Right, you can see that all the encryption files. You don't have to worry about that yet. Instead, start here, right? So with VPN, if you open it, you will notice that it has a make file. So I believe you guys, I'm sure you know that with make files, you kind of run make and that will set up everything. 
Go ahead and read the README file. And then as you can see, there's two little scripts here, VPN client.c and VPN server.c. So basically you run one, you know, VPN server on the server side, VPN client on the client side. All the code is there. Uh, I strongly recommend that you read through it. You know, you know, it's not, um, how do I open it? Yeah, read through it. You know, it should be very uh, interesting read. As you can see, it's not that long, but some of this code I started describing last week, uh, sorry, on Tuesday, and I will continue to describe it next, next lab, uh, lab period, okay? But you can start reading through it. <coughs> you can see it's not that bad. And then VPN client also over here. Can you guys see the code that I'm showing right now? Yes. Yes. Great. All yes. Right. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, and then this, you can see the code is, is really not that, that much. Okay. So read through it. Um, and then you'll run both of these. And then once you run them, hopefully you'll be able to establish your communication, do the pinging and everything else. Okay. All right. So I hope those instructions are helpful. Um, at this point, I'm gonna, I explain what I want you to accomplish at this time, really. Right. So just focus until here before the encrypting the tunnel part will, and we will continue that next week. Uh, at the end of the day, I want you to submit just one lab report. As I said, remember, I'm kind of extending every, giving you pretty much, um, given the, the whole uh, pandemic situation, giving you a little bit more time to do things. Um, yeah, so basically I'm gonna open it, open up the floor now to any questions you might have about this lab. Remember on Tuesday, very important lecture on anomaly detection and IDS systems. And then by Wednesday, please pick a topic for your project uh, and then just let me know, okay? So at this time, um, so I'll stop here as far as the explanation of the lab and I'm gonna open it up, open up the floor for questions. So the RCM project, uh, do we watch the video that you had posted and choose yes. a topic from that? Yes, yes. Just watch that video. So if you go, uh, it should be very clear there. I mean, it should be. Can you see what I'm showing the calendar? Uh, yeah. 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 So if you go to March 26 and just watch this video, I mean, it's, it's an easy thing to do, uh, Corey. The, the RCM project is actually simpler than, okay. than the, these other labs. I mean by far. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Just look at the video. You know, we did the exam. I'll, I'll try to have your exams graded uh, this weekend, hopefully. Um, then look at the video for RCM. Remember I'm giving until the end of the semester for that. Look at VPN. So that's an important topic that I really want to, you know, it's, it's very important for the, the class objectives. So make sure you cover that. Um, and then on, Monday, you can see here, I'll talk about um, build your own AI-based IDS anomaly detection system, right? So I'll talk about that. And then, and, then we'll, and then after that, you'll have both the IDS lab, the VPN and RCM lab. So if I go back here, you can see, can you guys see the, the slides? Yes. Okay. So what you have left, you know, assuming you've submitted all your other homework, right? You've submitted the firewall lab and everything. All you will have left is the VPN software lab, this one, the IDS anomaly detection lab, the final written exam, and then the two projects, the RCM one, and either pick extending the VPN lab or extending the anomaly detection, either or. All right, are there any other questions? So um, you want one lab report per person, right? 
Yes, so please on Blackboard submit, every person should submit a lab report. It just makes it very confusing for me. You know, then they tell me, oh, it was, uh, you know, Bobby that had to send the report and, and nobody submits anything and it just creates problems for me. So everyone be responsible, submit your, you know, basically worry about your point, you know, do it, but then submit the, the report on Blackboard, okay? Should the report have our group members' names on it or just ours? It, you know, it, it doesn't matter because you, I think you will be submitting your own anyway, right? So it shouldn't, it should not be an issue. Okay. Work with, you know, you, the whole semester you were working in those groups, right? I, you know, and, and you worked well, you helped each other out. These are labs that require, you know, some, some, some help, right? So think running ideas and things like that. So you can work together somehow via Zoom maybe or WebEx. And then, um, but yeah, just as far as submitting, submit each, each person, submit a report, please. Just, it makes it easier for me to. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So again, just ask questions. Uh, otherwise, I'm, you know, you, we can, you can log off if you'd like uh, and, or work connected somehow like this. But what I want you to do, it would be a lab session today, right? So basically today, we would be in the lab right now. And so I would ask you guys to start working on the lab assignment. Wen Lian, did you get my email about the um, the purchasing of the license and all that? Yeah, I got the email about that. Did you did you move on that? Yeah, uh, I have a question. It's like uh, after we purchase those things, so how can we get like the refund? It's you. You saw Professor Jang's email, correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's his. He gave those instructions. So. If if you don't if you don't like that idea, you know you it's you it's entirely your right to push back. Okay. Oh, okay, no problem. So uh, you know it, that's just just what he said, and uh, I you know he said he's gonna uh, reimburse. So I definitely don't exceed the, that six hundred dollar budget budget because he's not gonna pay you more than that. Yeah. Uh, so after I purchase all those things, so I just send an email to you and Professor Jiang, right? Yes, you definitely need to include him because, you know, I don't do anything as far as paying, right? So that would be um, him. So you can copy me. I mean, okay. it's, 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 it's a hundred percent his instruction. So he can't not pay you back your money. Okay, no problem. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. We should probably meet about that project at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I will talk about Shashi and set up a time with you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Oh, all right. So I see that not everyone is in this chat, in this um, Zoom. Do you guys know if the other students, they're just like watching the videos or anyone know if like a student are just like have disappeared off the face of the planet? I mean, anyone know anything about uh, other students that, that you know, for instance, oh, they're just watching the video. Um, well, I can speak for Tink. She texted me earlier um, saying that her power is out, so okay. she can get online. Okay, so like, but so just tell them then that I will be posting this video or otherwise email me with questions. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Neil. I got your chat as well. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Well, that's good. Yeah. All right. So any questions? I'm here. So just let me know or otherwise start working on the project, maybe reading through and you find any issues. Just ask. I'm here. Remember, office hours are Thursdays, uh, two to five. So I had a couple of students come in today. So let me know. I mean, is that in the same meeting appointment? Huh? Is that in the same meeting room? It, yeah, I'm using, I only have this. So it works really well for me. So, you know, I connect to it and then you can connect to this at any time. And as long as I'm there, we can chat. Make sense? Yes, it does. And yep. uh, sorry to intrude, but uh, uh, show and how I'm going to start up my my meeting so we can join in on that. So thank you, Professor. I'm out. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Guys, so what I'm going to do since it's a, uh, I'm going to close out this so I can start saving the video and then I'm going to connect back on uh, and then, you know, and I'm not going to record that portion of the, of the time. Okay, so I'm just going to close out for a second and then I will come back. Okay. Oh, yeah.